Y'all know the game by now, let's dive into some of these hot takes, those unpopular opinion, and those spicy messages that I love to dive in. Yes, I stole this from a much better reviewer critic than myself, but I love doing these and I'm not going to stop. So, let's dive into some of these. I reached out on Twitter, just follow me on Twitter, and uh, find out when I'll be doing these call-out things. So, let's dive in. Merillion are better without fish. They're different. I will say that they have produced some of my favorite songs without Fish. They're definitely a very different band without Fish. They're much more atmospheric. I find, and people are going to probably ring me out for this, but I find when they were with Fish, they had much more of a bite. They had much more of a sharp edge. Like, Fish brought that rage. And as much as I love uh, H, he doesn't have that same edge. He doesn't have that same bites. He doesn't have that same kind of like driven passion. He's much more of like a behind the scenes poet than he is like that protesting rager. He doesn't have that Scots blood in him. So I can't say that it's better because I actually, the few albums that they put out with Fish are some of my favorites. They still have some favorites with H, but it's a different band. I, I, I can't say if one's better than the other, but it's a different band. I personally like Fish a little bit more. Nick Briggs can get it. Damn, how he can. Jeez, have you seen this man? I mean, damn. Grace for Drowning, Heritage, Storm Corrosion should be seen as a trilogy. With slight changes, you can still make it a cohesive Opeth or Porcupine Tree slash Stephen Wilson rec record by juggling the songs accordingly. I'm actually going to try this, so hopefully I'll have a Spotify playlist down below which has and encompasses all three of these albums, and I think that was the mindset when they went into the studio for these three albums. I think that was kind of, like, I mean, they were all written around the same time, so it would make sense that these three work as a trilogy. And I wouldn't be surprised if this was their mind going in there. I, now, it's not an official trilogy by any stretch of the imagination. You can definitely make that comparison. Supporting my take that Tom York cannot sing. Brah. Brah. Have you heard Creep? The man has a different singing style. And uh, true, later on, he's gotten more into the mumble, high falsetto styles. But when they were starting off, Radiohead... Especially Tom York had some pipes, uh, fake plastic trees, especially as well. Uh, the dude can sing. He might not be able to sing as well as he once did, but unlike other uh, singers, we won't mention who, unlike other singers, at least he's able to play within his range and keep it flowing. Uh, and that's something that you can't say for a lot of other singers that are getting on in their years. Electric Light Orchestra's El Dorado album is incredibly underappreciated album and deserves to be hailed as one of the pr great prog rock albums of all time. Yep. Yes, it does. Yep. This guy is true. He's got it. It does. It is a full-on masterpiece. It is amazing. Please listen to it if you haven't already. Uh, he's right. He's, he's right. Neo Prog is the smooth jazz of prog. I can't argue against this. I really can't. Uh, I, like, I love Neoprog. Neoprog is one of my favorite sub genres of prog, but they kind of are the smooth jazz of prog. Like, they've gotten, they know what they want to play. They play it really well. Yeah, I mean, unless, unless they go through, like, another real trailblazer of something new, um, as they did back in, like, 2007... Yeah, they've just kind of become the smooth jazz of Prague. Hot take. Early Muse 2000 to 2006 is better than most Radiohead. It's different. Um, it's definitely more technical. Um, but I also feel as though Radiohead has done more groundbreaking and avant-garde and boundary pushing than Muse has done. I feel like Muse has done a lot in terms of like the technical, in terms of the production, in terms of really seeing what rock can do within this kind of a setting where Muse was kind of like those people in the lab and just kind of testing out different beakers. Um, Radiohead were the ones that were actually in the field and being like, let's see what happens if we do this and let's see what happens when we do that. So in some respects, it's also comparing apples to oranges. In some respects, I do see the comparison there. I can't really say if one is better than the other because they both are setting out to do different things. 
So they're just different. I love this one, and this is one that I just I have to. Radiohead's creep is actually really good. Y'all are just cowards. Yeah. Yeah, creep is a great song, guys. It it's a great song. I uh, I didn't realize I had to defend creep, but um, creep is a it's a great song. <laughs> I never thought I had to sit here and try to defend creep as if it's a bad song. It's it's a brilliant song. We haven't had one like it since, or before. At the drive-in, were in many ways just as progressive as the Mars Volta with regards to their technicality, experimentation, and avant-garde style of aesthetics. Again, yes, yes, yes. At the drive-in was just as progressive as the Mars Volta. The only thing that the Mars Volta has over uh, at the drive-in, and something that I will defend because I like the Mars Volta more than I like at the drive-in, is the Mars Volta use those longer sweeps of music. They push their music into the 7, 10, 15, 30 minute lengths. Um, and at the drive-in kept it as a bite-sized, cohesive, small moments. Um, but I mean, the Mars Volta basically took what at the drive-in did and progressed them even further. So within that respect, the Mars Volta, if we were to compare the two, um, are more progressive in that sense, and that's probably why they get the knock of being so progressive when compared to at the drive-in. Uh, but at the drive-in is still, in many ways, just as progressive. It's just, the boys weren't ready for it. Pink Floyd isn't prog. Like, metal is proggy, but as a whole, Pink Floyd isn't a prog band. They're Pink Floyd. Pink Floyd should be its own genre, but for my money, not prog. Uh, no, I don't agree with this. Pink Floyd is definitely a prog band. I mean, look at Adam Hart Mother, look at the entirety of Wish You Were Here. Uh, they are a progressive rock band in that they took rock music and progressed it. They took both ideologies of what I consider to be prog and progressive rock. They invented so many different styles of music. They invented so many different expressions of how to present rock music. Um, they really redefined and solidified the concept album with Wish You Were Here, Animals, and The Wall. I can't see how they would not qualify as a prog band. Like, I'm trying to think of a circumstance in which they wouldn't be considered a progressive rock or a prog band. And I just, I honestly can't do it. So, um... Yeah, no, I, I unfortunately have to disagree with that one. We don't need more prog metal gent bands. We need symphonic prog ones, and they can be heavy too sometimes. I will agree to this one. Um, I feel like we have a, a, an oversaturation and an influx of progressive metal and gent bands nowadays. I mean, it is part of the zeitgeist. It is part of the spirit of the times. It is what people want and what people are listening to. But I feel like we've lost a lot of great, great, um, progressive, symphonic bands. Like, we're no longer seeing the turnout that we once had with the Flower Kings or Transatlantic. I mean, Neil Morse and The Tangent are still kind of out there. What I would really like to see is these symphonic bands not just hunker so closely to the retro prog. Like, I want something from a symphonic progressive band like, even something that, say, the Polyphonic Spree was doing, or some indie bands are doing some great work with a symphonic sound, and I want to see more of that. Um, because, heck, you throw a dime in a concert studio and you're going to hit somebody that's a, in a progressive metal or a gent band, so let's, let's, get some, let's get some more symphonic prog out there. And I think I'm going to leave it at that. Thank you guys so much for submitting your uh, hot takes, unpopular opinions, and spicy comments. Uh, they're always great to read and dive into and comment about. Uh, leave some of your own as well as comment on some of the items that we've talked about on this um, video by commenting down below. Thank you guys, as always, so much for watching. You guys, as always, are the best. And until next time, notes out.